Okay, it's been quite a while since uh, I've done a video, and I want to talk a little bit today about a Star Trek The Next Generation episode called Silicon Avatar. And um, I actually came across this because I uh, <laughs> taped this on VHS quite a while ago, and I have to get a new TV set, so I've got this the TV that plays uh, video cassettes. So um, I wanted to, uh, I just stumbled across the a uh, cassette that had a number of miscellaneous things on it, and this was an episode that was on it. And um, what I really liked about this episode, because one of the things I hated about Star Trek The ne Next Generation, uh, I mean, I think it was good in the sense of, like, we needed some new Star Trek uh, after the original series ended, and um, to me, they could have just ended with this show and not Voyager and Deep Space Nine and all the other things that came out afterwards. Um, but uh, for what it was worth, uh, there were a lot of good episodes. Uh, Clankers, too, especially in the first season, the second season, and the last season. But uh, one of the things I kind of had a problem with with Next Generation, that everybody, we got along, everything was always, uh, you know, solved at the end of the episode, everything was all happy endings, and life isn't like that, you know, whether this be this century or the 25th century. And Silicon Avatar um, kind of had this nice little edge to it, which I liked. And in this episode, uh, the Enterprise crew of Riker and Commander Data and Dr. Crusher are in the process of helping these uh, people colonize a new planet. And um, during the course of uh, their uh, time on the planet, the crystalline entity, which was in the episode Data Lore, happens to show up and proceeds to eradicate everybody on the planet. Um, there was one colonist that Riker had kind of a crush on. She stays behind to help his old man who falls. And the silicon, uh, the uh, crystalline entity, um, destroys them. Fortunately, uh, the Enterprise crew manages to get into a cave deep enough and um, manages to survive. Well, uh, the Enterprise shows up and uh, beams at the landing party. And Starfleet assigns this woman, Dr. Marr, who is a zoologist or something, that um, is familiar with the history of the crystalline entity and is very intrigued by this because of the 11 prior attacks in which no one has survived. There were survivors of this attack. And Captain Picard wants her to coordinate with Data. And she's really reluctant to do it and shows pretty much an outward hostility towards Lieutenant Commander Data. And it turns out that Dr. Mars' son, who we later find out known as Rennie, was one of the com colonists on Omicron Theta that lore helped destroy by means of the crystalline entity. So she lost her son, and she outright accuses Data of being in allegiance with the crystalline entity, saying, oh yeah, the reason why you guys survived was because you were there, and you're in allegiance with the crystalline entity, and that's why you your, your landing party survived, because you're an ally of it. And she goes to say, if I find out that you are in allegiance with it, uh, I'm going to have you disassemble. So it's it's a pretty powerful meaning. Anyway, um, Captain Picard starts to theorize that since it's a living organism, that maybe there might be some way to communicate it and uh, communicate with it. And this completely, <laughs> Dr. Mar goes berserk. Like, what are you talking about? You know, uh, it killed th millions and thousands of people, and you know how could you like think about that or communicating with it? And um, Captain Picard goes, well, the uh, blue whale on Earth uh, uh, devours millions of cuttlefish in order to survive, you know. And she said, these aren't fish, these are real people, you know. And Commander Riker even, like, uh, chimed in and said, you know what, I think this thing should be destroyed. And um, Captain Picard goes, well, I believe, number one, your personal feelings are allowing you to influence your job. And Commander Riker gives a little sling back at him, saying, you know, to permission to speak candidly, go, this isn't the first time I've lost somebody on a mission, Captain. You know, and now I'm going to go write the letter to that lady's family, uh, her lady columnist that I had a crush on to her family, you know, just so we understand each other, which I kind of liked, actually, giving a little pushback to the captain. Anyway, so Dr. Mar's attitude towards Data starts to change because she learns that Data has all the memory of all the columnists that were on Omicron Theta. In fact, that of her son. And Dana is able to talk in her son's voice, and he reads some journals about how he met a girl, and he's even well in school. And so she starts to like him. So anyway, uh, because of that, 
they start to work together and try to develop a way to communicate with the crystalline entity. And what they do is they, first of all, like Data discovers that whenever the crystalline entity is attacked, it leaves like behind a graviton pulse. So the Enterprise manufactures something like that to use as a lure to draw the crystalline entity to it. And then uh, they determine by sending out these pulses that they'll be able to communicate with the crystalline entity. So um, while they're working on this, another uh, ship, the Callisto, gets attacked by the crystalline entity. And Dr. Mar is really affected by this because she starts thinking about her son, like, gee, I want to, you know, the, reminiscing or making an analogy to the fact, like, when soldiers die, they cry out for their mom. And she's like, gee, I wonder if my son cried out for me when the crystalline entity attacked uh, him. And, you know, and then she starts to regret. I always said I was going to come back and help him out and, like, you know, be with him, but I never found time to, and now it's too late because the kid is dead, you know. Anyway, um, the Enterprise develops this uh, way of communicating with the crystalline entity, and they're sending out pulses, and the crystalline entity responds and moves in on them. And so the crystalline entity starts responding back, and Dr. Mario is like, oh, it's beautiful. Look how beautiful it is. And he goes, I wonder what would happen if I changed the frequency. And what he does is, instead of sending out pulses, it becomes a straight beam, and the crystalline entity starts to react violently. The captain regards Dr. Ma, return the pulse to its original configuration. And she's just staring at the screen, not listening. But, you know, and then uh, Data, he, like, you know, he tells Data, shut it down. And commanding Data can't stop it. And then he goes, middle of orange. He goes, Captain, I can override it, but it'll take too long. And the crystal entity gets over flooded with this constant pulse and it blows to, <laughs> it blows to about a million pieces. And she looks at very coldly at the view screen because, now it'll never harm anyone ever again. And Captain Picard, you can see his furious, but Commander Riker is like giving like a sort of like thumbs up, like, yeah, I'm glad you messed it up. And at the end of the episode, um, you know, Captain, obviously a career as a Starfleet, you know, uh, personnel is over with now, having disobeyed this order. And she asked Data to take her back to her quarters. And she says to Data, I did it for you, meaning trying to speak to address her son through Data, and he goes, do you think my son would have been happy? And Data's like, I really can't give you that answer, but based upon what I knew about from him from his journals about you, uh, he was proud that you were a scientist, and I think he'd be disappointed that you did this and now ruined your career with Starfleet. Um, and it leaves you kind of ending, but I really like the revenge angle, and because too many times, oh, we'll all get along, but you know what? There are some times where some things happen you just can't forgive. And I remember my mom once said to me that if anything ever happened to me or my sister, she goes, I, I hunt them down. And I just, <laughs> you know, and my mom's like this little lady, like, I hunt them down and, you know, don't worry, I get to them. And, you know, I believe that she would. It's scary. But I don't think ever, I think one of the strongest, you know, uh, calls in nature is I do believe that, you know, a, a mother protecting the young or revenging their young if they were killed and you remember you're always a mother's kid no matter how old you get but i always and you know you hear stories in real life about people that will like someone will uh kill one of their relatives or their wife or their daughter and they'll get arrested to go to prison to get stationed in the same prison as the person that killed their relatives so they can kill them i mean it's you know that's how deep some of this stuff goes this these hidden feelings. And what I liked about it is that no matter what century you're in, my friends, whether it's the first century or the 59th century, there are some emotions that aren't going to end. And uh, they will stay with you. And I think as human beings, I think there's some things that we're never going to uh, move past. But I did really want to talk about that. And I was one of the things, because that was my big pet peeve about starting that generation, was because, oh, we're all so happy. And there are other episodes that I know you fans of the show know about. Um, and just very similarly, and not to go off topic a little bit, but if you recall from the third season episode, oh, I'm sorry, the first episode of the fourth season, The Best of Both Worlds Part 2, when this Riker gets this battlefield promotion to become captain of the Enterprise, and he lets this Lieutenant Commander Shelby, who he's never served with before, become first officer. You know what I've been like, you know what? Doing what, what he did in Silicon Avatar to Captain Wild, permission to speak freely. If I was warped, like, hey, you know, man, listen, mister, 
we served together for three years, four years together, and you picked this lady to be your, who never served with before as your first officer? I'm like, and whether it's female or male, whatever, it's like, hey, man, we served together. You know, we spilt the same blood, and we've seen our comrades fall. And you picked this person as your first officer over someone that you've actually been in combat with. I mean, so I had a problem with that, too. Um, I would have liked to have seen something with that, like a little bit of like a dig there, maybe in like a later episode, like Worf kind of giving Riker the cold shoulder and then Riker say, hey, what's up? I'll tell you what's up. That's what's up. You know, you picked this person. I mean, and the thing is, even though at the end of that episode, Captain Picard came back, and the, the command structure we established, you know, with Captain and Riker as first officer, I still would have been like, you know, hey, so that, that's the person you go with as first officer. Someone you've never served with before. I mean, and that's all we've been through. And, you know, yeah, there's the military hierarchy and stuff like that, but listen, my friends, it's very important to know that the human beings are still human beings. I mean, look about Benedict Arnold. Now, if some of you are very familiar with his history, um, you know, he, people don't know how to really, you know, classify him because there's monuments in upstate New York, like the Battle of Saratoga, Battle of Fort Ticonderoga, where he's praised as a hero, but he's known as a traitor. And if, if one of the reasons why he committed treason was because he got passed over command to be promoted to general. Other junior officers got promoted over him. General Washington finally promoted him, and Benny Arnold always, always felt, oh, well, he George did that because he's a friend of mine, and, really, and I really feel like I earned it. That's still no excuse. But, again, you could understand uh, how things happen. So, um, again, back to the Silicon Avatar episode. Um, I did really like that episode, and I liked it a lot. Because I liked that little human revenge thing that I don't care how mechanized or electronicized or advanced we get in technology. There are some emotions that will never go away. And a mother seeking vengeance for the death of her son, I don't think we'll ever see an end to that. But let's hope things don't come to that. <laughs> well, this is one of my videos, and uh, please uh, like it, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.